Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the UK Brand Show and hello, Penny. Hello, Mark. How are you? Very well. Well, now you, you, know, you are very well, I believe, because you've had a wonderful trip abroad, haven't you? I have, yes. I'm still a little bit jet lagged, but yes, I went to sunny America and uh, had fun and met family. So three years. Oh. Well, that's how long pandemic. we've had it, isn't it? The pandemic, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So um, yes, feeling uh, refreshed, but slightly uh, still a bit spaced. But was hopefully, I'll be right. an, an emotional occasion. Very actually, yeah, yes, it was. Um, yeah, I can't, we all can't believe three years has just flown by, you know. Um, I know. It's so, incredible, isn't it? It's hmm. incredible. And interesting, actually, that America have got a lot of the similar problems to us of staff and uh, power costs. Um, yeah, yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah, funny. I, I was only thinking that the very same thing I was watching the news, and it was a report on America and recessions and high costs and inflation and like oh god yeah you tend to think it's just the uk it's not it's worldwide isn't it really no and, and you know you think of the the size of the countries in terms of difference and uh the location in the world and yet yeah we're all the things they were saying was very much what we're experiencing here yeah yeah well, um, today we are going to talk about, and um, before everyone switches off as soon as they hear me mention these, this, this word, these two words, um, don't, because that's in the intention that you don't switch off because you don't need to. So we're going to talk about advertising technology, ad tech, which makes most people go cold and go, oh gosh, no, that's not for me. That's for some specialist, some geek or something in our organization. Well, it's not because, um, Although it might be in terms of the nitty gritty and all the rest of it, you know, it's the same with when you and I Pam, were working in, in, in the sort of media business and in, in, in like Kent Messenger with you or the Daily Mail with me or whatever. Do you, do you remember using the phrase, you know, look, I, I'm not going to talk to you about, you know, how things work. I'm going to talk to you about marketing and ideas and, you know, and promotional ideas. And, yeah. you know, if someone else can worry about the, the actual nitty gritty bit, we're going to talk about ideas and normally the technology will fit the idea. And it's the same thing now. It yeah. really is the same thing with technology. That just you know, a I think. Platform. Yeah, it is. It's just a different world now, and different different types yeah. of rules. So, uh, yeah, and the things like GDPR and privacy laws and trust and all the rest of it comes into it these days, which didn't in in our day back inside media companies. But. Um, well, yeah, so so I think what we need to do, whether you're, again, big business or small business, you need to know about ad tech in terms of it can affect your business. And you don't need to know the ins and outs. You don't need to know the nitty gritty of, you know, what the inside of a demand side platform looks like or anything like this. You just need to know some basic ground rules of what things can affect your business, whether you're a small business on a high street or, you know, an industrial park or you're a big media company, whatever the rules tend to apply and people sometimes forget that. So today I was going to talk to you about two things, really, well, both connected with ad tech. One is the sort of five trends I think are impacting the, the ad tech industry at the moment and things we, as, as people who will be involved with advertising, if you're a small business, you'll have people advertising on a website. If you're a big business, you may have advertise of your own and you've serviced them and or they do self-service advertising. There's various, various different ways we are affected by advertising, whether you are big or you're a small company. And it's just if you are leading a company or you know commercially responsible in that company, you just need to know what the environment's like around you so you can talk to people competently about mm -hmm. the space. And it's that's all this is about. It's scary as it sounds, is it? It's not as scary as it sounds, no. As long as you get your head around the fact yeah. that you don't need to know, you know every single end detail, you just need to know the Some basics. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to share my screen, and hopefully this will be some use to some people. Um, so there we go. Can you see that? I can. Excellent. So... Um, so it's a topic which, you know, crops up all the time and something I'm asked about frequently by, you know, all sorts of different people, people in the media circles or not. But it's the idea and the area of advertising technology, ad tech. So, you know, as we become more as an industry, you know, whatever industry you're in, more focused in terms of our offerings to advertisers, you know, what we tempt people into advertising with us about on our website, say, 
you know, we're all becoming more and more involved in ad tech, whether we like it or not. And so the key thing is how do we choose the right partners to work with? And what should we be looking for? You know, do we understand the world of ad tech um, uh, on a basic level? And what, and what the companies in that space are thinking about. So, you know, what areas of advertising are now trending that should help us choose where we focus our efforts. And I'm going to cover two areas in this sort of short presentation. One, looking at those latest trends and then a glimpse perhaps into, um, into the world of ad tech companies. Those ad tech companies are out there and to get and sort of under the hood view of what to look out for as, as people who are engaging with advertising or advertisers. It'll all make sense when we go, hopefully. So firstly, the basic thing is, what is ad tech? Well, you know, and why it's important. Well, let's just go for this slide because I think it's important. You know, ad tech is an important part of running a digital advertising campaigns. And advertisers will usually buy or manage or measure the digital advertising. Digital advertising allows us to do all these things now. It says where it's buying it, you can buy it programmatically. People might have heard of where you, um, it's like an auction, you'll bid on a space or you'll bid on a, a, an audience uh, and you can manage your campaign and change it as you go because it's very flexible being digital. You can stop something running in something immediately I have it running somewhere else at the same same breath almost. Well, that's the benefit and, of digital, isn't it? That you can track it. So absolutely, it's and, worth and understanding. That's a, and that's the thing. Measure it again. Yeah, the third thing there that you know, how do we, as you say, track it? How do we measure it? Yeah. Um, and what to, how we, how do we, how do we gauge the ROI on all of this? And you can do that with digital, which is the not just sticking a. 48 sheet on a billboard and you know trying to talk about how many eyeballs might see it and yeah you know it's, <laughs> it sounds dark ages suddenly that doesn't it oh that's still part of the whole landscape of it's course. more transparent isn't it it is it is so you know again advertising technology you know aka ad, ad tech is an overarching term which describes the tools and the software that advertisers use to reach audiences and deliver and measure digital advertising campaigns. To me, that really sums it up. Um, you know, buying and selling digital ads have become more complicated because of it, but advertising uh, technology streamlines the whole process for us. Mm -hmm. It can make it a lot simpler for us. There are common ad tech tools, and I say such as these things called demand side platforms, which you're not going to get into because it doesn't matter, but it's a platform, a technology that enables advertisers to buy impressions on a website. How many people are actually looking at your website, what the views are, how long they dwell on your site, and they can select audiences across many publisher sites. So in the past, you might have just gone along to you know, pick a newspaper, say you might have gone along to the Daily Telegraph and say, I'd like to buy into your audience, but I don't think your audience, Mr. Telegraph fits mine totally it sort of does but there's a lot of bit of wastage in there as well well now if you're buying things through various platforms you can buy a part of an audience a segment or a few segments of that telegraph audience and if the daily mail reaches the other bit of the you know the audience you can go to them and buy their bit too so that's what digital can do for you, and that's what programmatic really does for you so it also allows brands to make the better use of their budget it helps maximize as i said earlier their roi within digital advertising. You can't use that in traditional advertising, of course. You just have to somewhat hope for the best. Do you remember that famous phrase, uh, you know, 80, it's an 80-20 rule? A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know which. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And then ultimately, the ad tech landscape allows advertisers to, to strategically plan, and that's the key word, strategically plan and optimize their advertising campaigns so they can get the best, as I say, from the ROI. So that's what ad tech is. Don't be scared by it. It's an enabler. It helps us be more targeted and it helps us manage our return on investment. Mm. So um, technology in, in, in just about any industry is all evolving at a faster rate than anyone thought possible. And that's especially true for the advertising industry. The global advertising industry hit nearly 400 billion US dollars uh, in ad spend last year. And whilst 2022, we may be heading for a sort of global recession and, and, and a consequential downturn in ad spend, there's still a huge amount of money on the table we can't afford to ignore. That's for companies big and small. 
So and that you know, first I'll, point on your slide is so key. Choose the right partners. It is, it is, and, and there's a temptation just to pick, you know, because you don't know about the subject, you don't know the questions to ask, and the first person knocking your door saying, can I help you in this digital world? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm glad of someone asking me the question, but if you know some questions to ask and know the environment, which is what today's about, you should be able to, you know, be a bit more choosy, shall we say. So, um, you yeah, know, what I'm going to do is highlight some of the major advertising areas trending, which are influencing the focus of our resource and time and and which show where you know businesses are in currently with some insights into the overall advertising industry and where it's all heading so let's take a look at um the first area so these are the five trends i think of impacting the industry at the moment the advertising industry um so social media advertising i mean that wasn't in existence 10 years ago and it's suddenly come from nowhere and in many people's cases it's taken their breakfast, dinner, and lunch in terms of revenue. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of companies working, you know, thinking now, are they the social media platforms an enemy or a friend or something in the middle, which is, of course, that term frenemy. Um, so businesses in every vertical you could probably care to mention are recognizing and responding more than ever to the value exchange proposition between the customer and the media company, say, or the, you know, the small business company or whatever the company might be. And particular interest lies in and around these social media channels. So many businesses are somewhat shifting their focus on automation and technology tools so they can better engage with their customers to improve their response rates online, as well as gain valuable insights into how effective their daily operations are, you know, and possibly could be. So that's something we're going to talk about in the next uh, UK brand show about this data and getting closer and how these social media companies do it and how we can learn lessons from them. But you, you just need to realize that, you know, one of the major trends is how, for example, and these guys are leading the way in many ways, how they can take data and use it. And yeah, somebody used the phrase of me once, we need to take our data, we need to um, extract it, manipulate it, and exploit it under certain guide rooms of course guidelines of course we'll have to extract it manipulate it and um exploit it to our own benefit but social media now as a platform as well you know there's so so many subheadings isn't there you know how <coughs> and, and it shifts you know instagram is kind of leading the field at the moment facebook's yeah. dropping off tiktok suddenly come onto the radar very much very much so. Yeah, it's really difficult for people to decide where they put their energies. But the good thing, as I said earlier, about digital advertising is that you can shift your campaigns very quickly. You yeah. can stop something and go to something else very quickly, Absolutely. which you can't do when you're planning out a poster campaign, which has been in three months in the making, and they're all sat in a warehouse somewhere where they go. And there's, it's a low cost to shift, isn't it? It is. It is. So the second one's extended reality, this XR, as some people call it. And we've talked about this. Then we had yeah. Steve Shaw on the show talking about it. And XR is a combination of augmented reality, which is AR, of course, virtual reality, which is VR, as well as mixed reality, which is MR. So extended reality, it can be a mix of all those things or some of the parts. It's got huge potential to assist businesses and their advertisers in engaging audiences, you know, and hone, if you like, customer perceptions, especially products and services, as well as providing a very much an interactive consumer and data-driven advertising solution. And it could transform overall the whole advertising landscape. It's very early days yet. We don't know. It is. We, we talked about metaverse when Stephen was on, and, and you yeah. know, we don't know where that's all heading yet. But I've been at conferences recently where you've had you know, things like one of the big makeup companies, think L'Oreal, I think, was on talking about what they're doing in the metaverse and giving people more better experiences now and et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to watch this space, but it is ad technology which is changing the landscape and impacting the advertising industry. The third one's all about, so again, we've talked about before plenty of many times, machine learning, ML, uh, and artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. um, so they're helping advertisers in the same way that the XR thing does gain deeper insights into things such as prediction of risk and 
pay-per-click, this PPC, people that may have heard of campaigns, and helping advertisers shape and finally target their things like email campaigns, which, of course, are going to get a better response rate, better open rate, so people feel they're relevant to them, not just something I've sent to everyone. Dear reader, you know, something yeah. which is personalised to me. So chatbot-generated content is, for example, a tool that can... Um, well, it's much more than a trend now. It used to be a bit of a trend, but it's more than a trend now. It's helping businesses guide their customers through the sales funnel and enables them to carry out very impactful direct response marketing as part of their overall advertising strategy. Fourth one's virtual tech. And the global pandemic forced many advertisers to make dramatic pivots in their operational procedures. So many employers found that um, the challenge that the COVID era has had is that workers are just as effective and inspired to work at home as they are in the office. So yeah. many companies and advertisers, and, and, and some are now continuing to, to choose to do so, do virtual meetings and conferences a bit like this, you know, what we're doing today, which help cut down on overhead costs of running an event, <laughs> not going to a studio uh, or whatever it might be, without losing any required communication or impact or customer experience. That's the key thing. I think the future lies in some sort of hybrid mix of that. So mm. we were talking earlier uh, about my news media conference coming up, and we're doing for the first time in person it's in Copenhagen next month. It's going to be good. We know from early days that there's lots of pent-up demand, it seems. Lots of people are booking more than we ever thought before. Many people are coming from one company rather than just person. people sending one person. So there's obviously a budget still there. They've kept it. For, and, and there's this, I say, desire to get back out and meet people. But I think from our point of view, for example, we are looking at next year now and starting to plot some in-person conferences, but we're then going to overlay it with some virtual stuff still as well because people may not always be afford to travel, don't want to travel, for either sustainability reasons or because they can't afford it now or for all sorts of different reasons. Um, so I think you need to allow for the fact that there's going to be a hybrid environment, but virtual tech is what it's all about. Um, yeah. However much it influences it, it's still going to be there. People are still going to work from home. Still, people, you know, even if it's two or three days a week. I think if, if, if anyone's seen this new Google head office, which is being built at King's Cross at the moment, so if you come into King's, King's Cross Station in London, as you come into the platforms, on your right-hand side, there is the mother of all buildings, uh, and it's called a landscraper. So instead of a skyscraper, this is a landscraper. It's a skyscraper laid on its side. Oh. And it's the hugest thing you have ever seen. It is If you laid the shard down on its side, this yeah. building is taller. So the shard is 310 metres high. This is 330 metres long, and it's massive. It's going to hold 4,000 Google employees when it opens next year, 2024. No, sorry, 2023. Um, and they're going to have uh, a nature trail on the roof with a running track. They're going to have basketball courts, five-a-side football courts, and some workspace, no doubt. <laughs> um, now, the thing is, Google employs 6,000 people in the UK, in London. So they can't fit them all in. So the spokesman for Google said recently, yeah, we're going to have you know capacity for 4,000 people. Not everyone will, will be working here all the time. Uh, we expect people to show up maybe three days a week. And his words were they can choose where best suits them for the other two days a week, which is obviously at home or a coffee shop or an office in town and a wee workplace or whatever. So, but but nevertheless... You know, that still indicates to us it's virtual tech and it's working from home and Zoom calls like this are not going to go away. I think there's a lot of discussion about this at the moment. You know, there's some companies demanding people come in. So employees are deciding to, to change who they work for. And then, mm. as you say, the hybrid, the three days a week does seem to be the, the norm now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, and then the fifth one, finally, and this, first section is you know, the digital advertising so the the digital advertising resources generally suggest that businesses and advertisers can get many more leads by having an online presence um, via a simple blog so mm -hmm. marketing and 
advertising companies have been focused on what's the word bossing um, the online and advertising world, and, and and now consumer behaviors online will continue to shape and influence the advertising industry as a whole. So building a website and developing an online presence can be a bit tedious, but there are some incredible tools and technologies that can help you grow your online presence and your business at the same time. And again, this is it's all about this ad tech world. So many tech service providers offer very intuitive mm -hmm. online visual content service to build you, build you a very professional, user-friendly website at small cost these days. So in essence, being aware of current and future advertising trends is vital for each company, yeah, say big or small, um, advertising and brand alike to survive in, in the fast-paced, ever-changing world that we're in. And technology and advertising will continue to go hand in hand and, and, and now and into the future. But it's not all rosy in the garden. This is where the second bit comes in, really. You know, there are some concerns about some of the developing trends we've just talked about, which we need to consider when tasking people and partners with ad tech companies who can help us so there's lots of people who can help us but we need to understand their world a bit as well as well mm -hmm. as understanding the environment what are their concerns and you know in and amongst the companies in the space what do we need to know about before we put our eggs in the in their basket so that's where this comes in and, and just knowing the concerns and what can we do to help us make the right choices so very simply the world of ad tech in you know, in, in many cases will continue to show growth this year and beyond, which is great. Nevertheless, you know, many of the companies in the space are showing signs of concern, and there are a number of signals, if you like, which are demonstrating why, which businesses should be aware of, and you know, as it could well affect them down the road when they choose their technology partners. So it means it will also affect our advertisers. So it's wise to know what those concerns are, as it will help you you know, know the right questions to ask before you make the choices of the people that you work with. That's a long way of putting it. Yeah. So the first one, again, there's just four or five of these, um, six of these, in fact. Number one is about the coming recession. So we've talked about this. You know, many economies around the world are currently shrinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not just here. No. Um, and, you know, while most are not yet officially in a recession, it's not, it's all not really a good signal the advertising market in the short to medium term you're talking um, about yeah. a one or two percent change yeah aren't you? yeah so. it's 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 small it's significant money but it's small and that's the point yeah. as i said earlier there's still massive amounts of money left on the table if we choose to ignore it yeah we've just got to work around it and be more creative and more impactful in what we do and add technology helps us do that so um yeah the obvious sort of maths are when customers spend less money our advertisers spend less money uh to reach the audiences they want to reach so when the advertising spends lower the ad tech spend is less and the margins are considerably reduced as well so it's like a vicious circle really but ad tech companies now find them as having pressures around their own profitability so yeah, they'll be looking to increase costs and, and prices to us as they sort of try to work with us. So it does pay to shop around us, is the point of it. Um, revenue reductions at the main platforms, they're a good signal. So, you know, when the main ad tech platforms have year on year revenue reductions, there's widespread concern. So, Facebook, a la Meta, is now seeing this for the first time in Facebook's history. Yeah, you know, it's never going to be great news for the rest of the industry, and it's a signal just to be cautious. That's all I really want to say on that, really. Yeah. Um, and YouTube has seen a smaller than anticipated revenue growth. You know, this is the largest ad realigned video platform, uh, and it's currently only growing with inflation. Mm. So, but considering YouTube is in many people's eyes at the core of their future, you know streaming ad markets and connected TVs and all the rest of it. And it's interesting to, to note that, you know, both those, for example, connected TVs and streaming uh, are still booming in many cases in comparison. So it doesn't really add up. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously something affecting what YouTube are doing. So again, it's just being careful. The fourth, I mentioned earlier, programmatic, you know, while the ad capabilities are really good at sort of aiding the brand, you know, big or small, 
how they ramp up their advertising spend quickly. And you know, the same goes for easily ramping it down the spend as well, just as quick. So there's also the fact that some people are, are suggesting to me that post-pandemic, the role of the salesperson has resurrected itself. And you know, clients wishing to engage face-to-face -face more, even if programmatic is here to stay. So ad technology can help you with programmatic. All I'm saying is don't put all the eggs in that basket, as a lot of agencies have done. You know, a lot of things, I think, you know, back to this young media planners and buyers and agencies, it's very easy for them just to go, do you know what? Let's just put all the money here. I could do it really quickly for our client. Um, and, you know, let's all go to the pub for lunch. But that's the wrong way to look at it, obviously, uh, because, you know, you'll get much better service when you have the ad sales people coming in to talk to you about what they've got to offer you. Um, rather than just putting everything under one basket of programmatic yeah. when you're making advertising campaigns. So again, ad technology can help us, but just be aware of the concerns that people are finding, it seems to me, that having someone in front of you talking more competently about the service rather than just go push a button and you hope for the best. It's not really, it's a bit more than that, obviously, but I'm being flippant, but the, you get the Yeah, no, it's absolutely right. And the fifth one's e-commerce, you know, is slowing down. The, the e-commerce share, the total retail spend is currently falling post-pandemic, that is. And customers are back in the high street buying again in physical stores. And that's exactly why self-service direct to customers, this D2C, e-commerce. Um, you know, we had Shopify. Do you remember we had Shopify on our brand show? Yes. Um, well, they're doing incredibly well at the moment. Yeah, they are. But they found that to do well and push themselves forward for the future, they've had to reduce the staffing levels by about 10%. Mm. So they are doing well, but at a, at a cost <laughs> is the yeah. point. Uh, they've had to you know, never waste a good recession type of thing. So they've got a good future, I think, but they've got less people working for them now because they've had to double up on people's commitments and, and, and what, they're paying, what they're working on, et cetera, et cetera. So, but it's just to be aware of that situation again. You know, again, the sort of simple maths are, you know, that a reduction in online um, shopping and online shopping means fewer ads that drive the online purchases and then further pressures on ad tech companies to provide those services. So that's not to say e-commerce is not important to many, but, you know, it, and it shouldn't be avoided, but it's something we need to look at when choosing the partners carefully once again. You know, what are they offering you? what the revenue shares like they're offering you, what fees are there, if any, which may be hidden somewhere. Shop around and just be sure to balance the revenue potential with the guarantees as with the ad, uh, with the ad technology capabilities. And then finally, uh, which is going to affect more the bigger companies than the smaller this one, is sort of this mergers, mergers and acquisitions. So the final signal that the ad technologies are typically funded by venture capitalists. So a lot of them are. Uh, and it leads to the fact there's a need to do one of three things ultimately, i.e. sell to a strategic buyer ultimately. Everyone's looking for an exit strategy for the end of the day, sell to a bigger company, sell to a strategic buyer, go public with it, or sell to a, a private equity and then to be managed and then sold again and the whole circle carries on. So most of the buying that ever happens over the next couple of years is likely to be about more buying value cheaply as opposed to paying a strategic premium. Mm -hmm. And that's just something, again, we need to work like up. So the summary of all of this is basically that we've seen all this scenario before, whether it was the dot-com bubble burst, the, you know, the ad tech um, public market collapsed uh, in the early noughties, or, you know, even 9-11. You know, the ad tech industry and the well-managed companies will all be fine, but many are not well-managed, and that's the point and they'll suffer. So hence, when we're choosing the right tech, ad technology partners, we need to be cautious. We need to be aware of the pressures of the companies in the space. But we also need to recognize, as I said, the first bit, there's a big value into understanding the landscape around ad technology because it can help us. It can help us drive a new world and a new digital world, which we're all going to have to face, whoever you are, whether you're a travel agency, whether you're a big media company, whoever you are, you need to face that in you know some way, form or uh, follow not. the consumers. Exactly right. Follow the consumers. Yeah, follow the consumers. Exactly right. And and follow them, 
and understand what they want and what they need from yeah. you and what, 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 what gives them value, the value exchange again. Yeah. And how can you, in the future, give them the better customer experience and give them a feeling that, A, you're not being scary to them by, you know, oh, my God, how do they know about that about me? But working with data companies, especially on how you actually target them specifically, um, which gives them something they feel, wow, I'm going to come back for more. They'll yeah. dwell more time on your website. Paid views. Uh, paid views on websites were sort of the big thing in the early days of the web. And they seem to have just fallen off the radar now because I can go on to uh, a page and not really look and be distracted by something, go onto the page, but I'm still being clicked. I've still clicked on the first page, even though I didn't look at it. Yeah. What's going to have more value is how long I've spent on it. And it's more likely I'm going to spend time. And if I spend time, I'll look at something on that website and you know, digest well, it more. It still comes back to all the principles, doesn't it? Content is king. It's all about adding value to any consumer's experience. You know, you, you've mm -hmm. often talked about technology versus um, the consumer value. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so that's it. I hope that was of use to some people because it's just, you don't be scared by technology. Take it down, yeah. It's just something which can help you, not mm. shouldn't scare you. <laughs> um, anyway, so there we go. So next time, uh, I, I, I will have just come back from this in-person conference. Yeah. The next next show, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about of the experience of like being back in an in-person conference for mm. the first time in three years. Mm. Um, what were the good bits? What the bad bits? What did we learn? What did we not learn? Um, and I'll also talk about the bit I'm going out there to talk about uh, to the audience, which is all about using this data that we touched upon today and how we get this first party data. We can control our own first party data, data um, and we can use that to, again, as I said earlier, to extract it, manipulate it, and exploit it to our own benefit. I've only been to one conference since the pandemic and I actually spoke um, about the charity work that I do and the whole conference was based around a piece of research which I thought was very interesting and it, it was interesting research but it was interesting that it brought everyone together and gave someone it gave people something to really um, take away as value. Mm. Did it have a was it like a big conference was it or? Yeah, I mean, we had uh, so we had speakers in the morning, and then we had breakout rooms in the afternoon. Right. Did you have uh, exhibitors and stuff like that? No, it wasn't that sort of. Uh, it was a charity conference held by a funder, um, and actually, the, the the lottery were there as well. Um, oh, right. So yeah, I just felt there was a real appetite for uh, collaboration and partnership, which is 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 quite key in the charity world just now um but also it was there to to present the research based on the needs of the people in this area and how charities can best serve them which yeah i thought that was a interesting way to to set up a conference yeah absolutely hmm. well well it's going to be interesting what are you planning in your sort of as organization for next year at this point is it too early in terms of what you might do in terms of um, is it going to be a mix of virtual stuff and people working from home still and and a, yeah. an office based thing as well and yeah still still a mixture um um but i would say uh we have moved into working from home um uh, as much almost as we were in the pandemic so rather than three days a week at work, it will probably be one or two and the rest right. of them. Right. Because people have become more efficient to do it that way. And so you just come in for collaboration. I know uh, large companies that have restructured their offices so that you have to book your space. So you either want a collaboration desk where you're going to be sitting with other people in your sector um, so that you can discuss projects or whatever, or you want to book an office because you need some quiet time. Um, right. So there, a lot of people are really looking at um, how they now work going forwards. Well, I'm sure we'll touch on this a lot more as the time goes on, Pen, on this show as well. 
it's i think it's a you know a, a moving feast as they say i don't think yeah. we've all settled down yet and with the yeah. uncertainty over the economy and inflation and fuel prices and you know all the other depressing subjects that are out there at the moment it does leave business feeling somewhat um uh cautious shall we say mm. at the next mm. year but, and speaking of cautious it's it there's a there's a little bit of cautiousness about some of the people I know going to the thing in Copenhagen, because it's going to be about uh, probably up to about 300 people um, from about 25 different countries all flying in for this thing. And of course, the danger is, these are people you've not seen for three years, and the danger is, oh, hello, hug, 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 yeah, hug, oh, yeah. COVID alert. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> So I think they'll be interested to see how people react to things like that, as in, will they just keep the distance and, you know, do a little hand wave or, or what? I just don't know. It's going to be very interesting, mm -hmm. even just There's, watching people. <laughs> I, I mean, I did find myself in, in airports and um, shuttle trains between terminals. I um, certainly wore a mask just mm. because it felt that there was too many people. Um, yeah. From all, all sorts place. of different places where the rates are going to be high or lower, depending where they are. Exactly. And, you know, for the sake of putting a mask on for half an hour or so, yeah. um, you know, it's no no real big issue, is it? No, it's not. No, it's not at all. Uh, so um, that's it then, Pen, for today. Well, safe travels, Mark. Can't wait to see, um, you know, your findings from Copenhagen next time. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and a slight little, you know, cautiousness as I said, for the, those reasons I've just highlighted, but um, it'll all be fine, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will. So thanks, everyone, for listening or watching, whichever you're on, uh, whichever platform you're on. Uh, we'll be back again soon. Uh, and if you want to catch up with us, Pen. Yeah, there's uh, ukbrandshow.co.uk is the website. You can email us and listen to previous shows. And obviously we're on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter if you want to get in touch. Exactly. So um, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you again soon. And uh, bye for now. Bye. <laughs>